Hey guys, hope you're having a great week. My name is Doug Bernier, and in this video, I'm gonna give you the one thing that we can all agree on is more important than the mechanics of your swing, and that is seeing the baseball. Now, okay, hold on a minute. Don't just turn this off and say, hey, this is really basic, I don't need to watch this. Stay with me for a second, all right? So, we all know that guy, right, that in practice can launch baseballs, great batting practice guy, but once he steps into the, once he gets into the game, he couldn't hit water if he fell out of a boat, right? It goes to seeing the baseball. Now, a quick little story for you guys. 2013, I was with the Minnesota Twins. I didn't make the team out of spring training. I go to AAA. About a week, week to 10 days into the season, I'm struggling. I had a leg kick, I wasn't synced up, nothing was right. My manager brings me out on the field early and he sets up a machine and we just start bunting. So I'm just sitting there, I'm bunting, bunting, bunting. Then he said, okay, pull it back, let's slug bunt. So I just did this and just started swinging. Sure enough, I started hitting line drives and those line drives turned into two hoppers off the wall. He told me, he's like, hey man, you got nothing to lose, you haven't got a hit in a week. So I did it in the, I, my first at bat, I was like, I'm just gonna sell out and try it. So I'm a little nervous walking into the box because everyone in the dugout knows I'm about to slug bunt with no one on base in the first inning. They're laughing at me, but I didn't care. You know, I was willing to try anything. So I get in the box. Sure enough, I turn this back foot like I'm going to bunt, but I didn't quite sell out because no one was on, you know. You know, you, you got a little pride in you. You know, we all do. So I, I kind of brought it back and I was just kind of giving it one of these. Well, what happened was I just sunk into my legs. First pitch, all I did was bring my barrel back. I didn't stride. I didn't try to get bat speed. I didn't try to open up the hips. I did nothing but see the baseball. I took the barrel to the ball. Sure enough, I hit a double off the top of the left center wall. That game I ended up going five for five. I've never seen the ball better in my life. I was able to pick up sliders early, change ups, fastballs. I laid off pitches off the plate. I saw the ball well. That was probably the first time I actually watched the ball come out of the pitcher's hand with both eyes. I know that seems crazy, but I've ne that was the first time I really noticed how well I could see the baseball. All right, so do a little trick for me. When you're playing catch, just kind of throw a ball to each other. You have both eyes on the ball, right, and you catch it. Now, cover one eye and see what happens. That's not easy to catch the ball. You lose depth perception. It, it, it's really hard to catch the ball. Most of us look at the pitcher with one eye. So if we can't catch a ball that's being lobbed to us underhand with one eye open, how are we able to hit with that? We need to be able to see the ball with both eyes. Now. As we move up in the game and we work on more things and we try to hone our swing, we work on mechanics, there's a lot of things we're doing, right? The thing that often gets overlooked and pushed to the back burner is seeing the baseball. It seems so basic, so juvenile that we don't even consider it anymore. But if you think about it, what was the very first thing you heard when you were first started playing the game, either from your coach or a parent or whoever? Hey, see the ball, see the ball and hit it. That's some of the best advice you'll ever get. See the baseball. So now I'm gonna go through five ways to help you see the ball a little bit better. All right, so the five keys to seeing the ball better. Number one, we're gonna look at the pitcher with both eyes. Number two, we're gonna maintain our posture throughout our swing. Number three, we're gonna make sure that our head and our eyes are on a level plane throughout our entire swing. Number four, we wanna be able to control our head during our load and once our heel strikes the ground, our front heel strikes the ground. Those are two major points of the swing and we wanna make sure those are controlled. That keeps our eyes uh, level, still, and it doesn't shake our eyes around. And number five, we wanna pick up the release point out of the pitcher's hand. There's a little viewing window just outside, depending on whatever his arm slot is. We wanna focus our eyes to that window before he gets there so we can see the ball as well and as early as possible. So let's go into them a little bit more. Number one, looking at the pitcher with both eyes. What we're looking to do here, a trick that was taught to me and that I like personally is I'll get in the box and as I'm getting ready, I'll actually look at the third baseman or the third base coach and then bring my eyes back to the pitcher. When I start just kind of, he when I'm just kind of looking at the plate and I work my way up, I have a tendency of just putting my left eye on the pitcher. Now I notice that because like I'll close an eye every now and then, like I'll close my left eye and my right eye is not looking at the pitcher. So that's why instead of taking my vision from home plate to the pitcher, I actually do my thing where I dress home plate, I get up there and now from here, my head is level, 
I turn and look at the third baseman or third base coach, and then I bring my eyes back to the pitcher. And from there, both eyes are on the pitcher. One other thing that does, it gets my head upright. If I'm down this way, if I go from here and work my way up, sometimes my head stays here. Now, when we read a book or a paper or whatever, we don't read like this, right? We read like that. So let's have our head in the posture that we're just most comfortable with. Number two, maintaining our posture. Now when I talk about posture, you're gonna be able to see it from this camera angle. What we want is we want our butt behind our heels and we want to have a slight bend to us with our upper body. From here, we're in a balanced position. Now, what I like about this is when we are in an athletic, strong position. When we can pick our leg up, our head stays still. So that's what we're looking for. If we get too upright, now we're not in a balanced position. Our head moves around a lot and we get very spin happy. So from right here, if I'm looking at you here, I get spin happy, the head pulls off. But from right here, if I can be in this position, the head tends to stay still when we can maintain that posture. So we wanna get our butt back and we wanna have a slight lean with our upper half over the plate. That puts us in a strong athletic position so when we do start to move, our head doesn't go anywhere. Number three, we wanna keep our eyes and our head on a level plane the entire way. So, I had a lot of problems with this one. This one was hard for me. I noticed when I just went forward, I was okay. My head stayed here, my eyes saw the ball well because my head and eyes were on the same trajectory. That's okay, it's okay to go forward. You, there's a lot of good things that happen from going forward. First, we wanna hit off of our backside. We don't wanna just sit here on the backside and spin and swing uphill, we don't want that. So we have to get off our backside. At least we wanna to get to 50-50, so if we have our weight on the back, we wanna get so we have our weight centered, so now we can rotate with some ease and our and our movements happen naturally. But when we move, and also when we move forward, we our hands get away from our body a little bit and gives us room so our hands can work properly behind us. That's very important. So that's why we wanna get off of our backside or at least get to 50-50. Now, as we're moving forward, we wanna be careful. We don't wanna go down and then, then push off. If we do that, at least for me, a lot of times I would go down, I would go forward, and as I would swing, I would tend to straighten up a little bit. So now my head is going this way, this way, and that way. That makes it very tough on your eyes. It makes it really hard to pick up the ball. So when we go forward, it's okay to go forward, but stay on that level plane, keep that head still, and make sure that if you do go forward, that it's, that it's not bobbing up and down. Number four, controlling our head during our load and when our front foot heel hits the ground. So when we load, if we get another problem I had when I didn't have good posture and when I was having a big load, I did everything. I went from a foot down to a wide out guy to an open stance and a big leg kick. I've tried everything. So. But when I, was, when I had a big leg kick, what would happen is sometimes I didn't always control it well. So I would get here and I would come this way, my head would push back and then I would fall. My head did a lot of things. But what happened was when I could control this load and I would get into my back hip and not over my back foot, now my head was able to stay still, which obviously then my eyes stay still and I can pick up the ball a little better. So I would be in this position from here, I could see the ball better. Now, another thing we gotta worry about is when our front foot hits the ground. If our timing's late, if we are just fast and rigid, or for whatever the reason, there's multiple, multiple reasons why. But if this front foot hits the ground hard, our eyes shake, our head moves. So we wanna make sure that we control our load, but when our front foot hits the ground, especially a heel strike, that it is a soft landing. It's not hard, it's not, aggre it's not super aggressive and quick, it's got some rhythm and some fluidity and some ease to it. So when we put it down, we're ready to go, we see the ball well. All right, so number five is picking the ball and the hand up at release point out of the viewing window. So what do I mean by that? Now, a big question I get a lot actually thrown at me is, where am I supposed to look when I'm in the batter's box? 
So what helped me, what worked for me was when I would get in the box and I would address home plate, I would look here up at the pictures at the emblem on his hat. I would give a nice soft focus. Soft focus, I'm not straining too hard, my eyes are blinking, I'm relaxed, I'm not worried too much, but that's where my eyes are focused. As he starts to go through his motion, I see from the side, I've been watching him, maybe I had previous at bats against him, I know where his arm angle is. I know if he's over the top, I know if he's three quarters, sidearm, underneath, whatever. But I try, as he's moving through his motion, I shift my sight from the emblem to the that angle or to that window, the throwing window where his release point is. From there, I'm locked in, I got a hard focus, I'm able to really look hard and I'm trying to see the ball as it's coming out of that window. I'm able to see spin, I'm able to see maybe the fingers are different on the baseball, seeing the ball behind it. There's a lot of things you can find when you look at that window. Now, obviously I know there are some pitchers that change your arm angle, you gotta do the best you can, but most pitchers have a consistent arm angle they're throwing from. So just shift your focus, your soft focus from the emblem of the hat to a harder, more intense focus to that throwing release point window. If you can do that, you're going to see the ball a little bit crisper, crisper and a little bit easier. Pay attention. What do you see? On your takes especially, see how well you can see the ball. Instead of just seeing the white baseball, see if you can see the seams on the baseball or the type of spin on the baseball or see if you can even find one of the logos on the baseball. Obviously that's not going to happen, but having that more intense focus is going to dial up the, the, the sight, the intensity, the vision a little bit more. So if we can look for something smaller, it's going gonna, it's gonna to increase our focus when we're looking for the baseball. So those five things are really important when it comes to seeing the baseball, and that's something you can take right away, implement it, and see results tomorrow. So don't underestimate one of the first things that you heard when you were a kid. See the ball and hit it. See the ball is the most important thing you can do. It's more important than any mechanical thing that you can work on, and if you can see the ball, you can hit it. Good luck, and go get them out there, guys.